Hi guys, welcome to Between the Spreadsheets with me, Stephen Englander. And tonight I'd like to welcome a very special guest, my, my very own father, Benny Englander. Now, Benny's been in the bag business. He's manufactured, imported, um, retailed, wholesaled, and he's been in the business for some 55, 60 years now. And I thought I'd bring him onto the show tonight to impart his wisdom. So, hi, Dad. How are you? Say hello. All right, thanks. Yeah. Hello. Are, are you suitably nervous? I'm not nervous at all. Oh, right. Great. Well, now that you're here, tell us all about yourself. So, let, let's start. How did you get into the bag business? Well, originally, I worked for my father, who also had a bag business. But we didn't get on very well, so I branched out on my own. Okay. So and that it's... was 62 years ago. Wow. So, it's like lots of people don't get on with the dancing business, do they? Because you kicked me out of the business when I was very young. No, you just left me. <laughs> and I wasn't very good at anything. And, and I thought I didn't want to work for a living. So I thought I'd become an accountant. I was like the black sheep, wasn't I? You know. Amongst the others. Yeah, I yes. know. No. So you get up every day. I mean, I know I know that over the years, you've, you've come in sometimes, you've like, had enough, you've sacked everyone and closed the place down. And then a few weeks later, you've come back and opened another business. I mean, now, recently, You've actually opened a new. You've extended the business, um, and, and you've actually opened a new factory. What what was behind all that? Well, I retired when I was sixty five, and I managed to last two weeks, and then I decided to reopen because I couldn't stand it being yeah. without something to do. Well, you found some leather as well, and you thought, what should I do with this leather? And you started making dog leads. Well, there were job parcels available, which I couldn't resist. Right. So you know me. I either yeah. do it or I don't do it. Yeah. And I did it. Yeah. So you've I've often found you, um, and, I, and a lot of people, which is surprises you because you're always surprised when people look at you and think, um, you, you know, you've achieved quite a lot and you're actually quite inspirational to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I've always found you quite innovative in everything that you do. In in fact, you've come across inventions and you, you don't know, come across inventions, you you've you've worked on innovations and inventions that have actually kept you in business. I, I remember I remember one thing that I've, I've I was very, very surprised at was many years ago, I think I think when I was about 17, 18, there was around 200 bag manufacturers in the local area within half a mile radius of where your factory was. Do you remember? Yes. And very, very quickly we were down to about six. And I think you're about one of the only actual bag manufacturers left in the country. I'm the only one left doing my type of gear in the country. Yeah. There are certain and, lines that nobody else makes. Yeah. And, and one of your regrets, one of, one of your, your sort of, you, you, you often put yourself down, which I don't, don't really like to hear because I, like, I, I think you come up with great ideas and great products. And, and one of the things you've, you said is that many years ago, a lot of the people that were in the bag industry all went bankrupt and now a lot of them are millionaires. And part of part of that process was that the, your very nature to solve problems sometimes worked against you, because whereas you came up with a method of surviving and competing against China by creating your own material, um, you 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 were able to to survive and even prosper to somewhat. But a lot of the people that failed because they weren't as clever as you, they started uh, they went bankrupt and then they started importing bags from China and made a lot more money by using Chinese factories. You're actually very wrong there. Oh, right. <laughs> but because uh, what happened was all the other people realized that the bag business wasn't really a very good paying game. Ah. And they bankrupted the companies to get a few quid out of it <laughs> yeah. and then started other businesses and became very wealthy out ah, of it. Right. But it's the same principle. Whereas me, it? I just knew the bag trade. I gave other people their ideas what to do. But I didn't take my own advice. I just stuck to the bag trade, like so, a big so, idiot, not the clever person you make me out. Yeah, but the the innovation sometimes, and this is a lesson to to a lot of people out there. You can you can often find a way to survive to make things better. But sometimes you look at the industry you're in and say, should I still be in that industry? And I think I think that's that's the lesson to walk away from here. But you've done okay. I mean, you've raised five kids, and you've you know we've all done okay, and none of us have starved, and we've always had nice things. So, you know, you've not done too bad. That's but, where the problem is. Because <laughs> I always made a decent living in the bank. Yeah, trade. yeah. So I kept it on. Yeah. Just just to just to make a note, I, in in a book I've put out there, I, I actually said that um, I don't think it's come originate from me, but sometimes the enemy of the best isn't the worst it's the adequate it's what works 
So sometimes okay. it's better to to have your old banger van break down and be unrecoverable so you get a nice new van. Whereas if it just works, you never really improve that much, do you? And it's sometimes you spend so much energy keeping something going that ultimately it's beyond your control. It's not that great. But you have come up with innovations and you have done well out of it. It's been ups and downs. But you know, if you were going to talk to somebody now, whether they're, they're new in business or they've got a small business, do you have any particular advice that you would give them? And I know you're going to say, don't do it. <laughs> no, they should listen to me because I failed at everything in the past. I know yeah. all the pitfalls. So what so, would you advise? About what? Okay, somebody's set up a new business and now they're saying, what do I do now? So, so I suppose what I'm saying is, what's the most important thing that somebody can do in business? Well, I've learned is to have the paperwork right. Right. Believe it or not, the paperwork should be right. Mm. Everything should be done above board and make a note of every deal you do with anybody. Right. Make what, a what full note of it. Well, if somebody says to you, right, I can do that, I promise you I'll do it. Mm. Get it in writing. Right. If somebody says, uh, I'll give you the money, get it in writing. You mean if you sell something uh, on credit? Get it in writing. Right. I've made too many mistakes by just trusting people. Yeah, yeah. Any any particular big one? Big customers. Any particular big story of, of where you've really lost because you've trusted somebody or someone's let you down? Well, the yes. The, the biggest, the, there are, I've made mistakes all along my life. Okay. okay. But this was in 1975, if you can remember that long back. Yeah, I was 13. I, I became slightly ill and I had to go to America. Yeah. Just a few days before, I went to Birmingham. Mm hmm and I went to my biggest customer there, who was a fire salvage dealer. And he said to me, Benny, I've just bought a load of leather from a big uh, uh, factory. I remember this road. deal. It was Arlinghide, wasn't it? D no, it was. No, that was another one. Ah, right. Sorry. This one was. Uh, and the, I went with the chap and we went to an old cinema that he'd bought mm. and he filled it with leather. And he opened the door and I couldn't get in. It was so packed with leather. I didn't know what to do. So he said to me, you can have all this. I says, yeah, but how much? He said, you can have it for 5,000 quid. So I said, I haven't got 5,000 quid. He says, well, take it and pay me when you've got it. I says, well, I've got to go to America in a few days, but I'll organize that it should get, uh, that will pick it up. How much was it worth? About five days? million, five, six really? million quid, and easy. You, were you going to sell it or were you going to use it to make bags with? Well, let me tell you, I would have sold the bulk of it mm. quite easily because in those days it, there was marble leather, which was very, very expensive. Anyway, uh, what happened was I came back to Manchester and I went came, went to my friend Ricky, not the not the second Ricky, the first mm. Ricky, and I said to him, "If you go to Birmingham, get, take a you have to take a big wagon with you, and you have to fill it up. Fill it up. You'll have to fill it up a few times. Bring it back here." put it in the factory, put it in your home, put it in my home, put it in everybody's home, fill the whole place with the leather, we'll get rid. He says, I'll do it, I'll do it definitely. So I thought, great. And I went off to America and I was there for about uh, six or eight weeks because I had to see things. And uh, um, when I came back, I thought, oh, I've got all that leather I'm going to. So I went to the factory, it was empty, there was nothing there. I went home, nothing there. Anyway, eventually after a few days, I caught Ricky and I says, well, where's all the gear? He says, well, I did go down for, for it with the van, but there was so much, I couldn't be bothered to bring it. It was too much to where to start there. It was only me to lift it. I said, well, you didn't, he said, no, I left it. So I said, why didn't you ring me? I would have organized it. Anyway, just then I raced down back to Birmingham and I went to the fellow and the fellow says, I'm sorry, it's all gone. And uh, I, gave, I gave it to competitors of yours who rang me and they all made a fortune out of it. I says, well, is there anything left there? He says, well, there's some scrap leather on the floor. <laughs> so I said, can I go and have a look? So I went with my transit van, which, as my son said, was a banger, but it was a nice souped up vehicle. And uh, I went there and I got in and there was bits of leather left all over the floor. Anyway, I managed to get a van load out of the bits that were left over. I brought it back to Manchester and it lasted me two years.
I sold 5,000 pounds worth and I had two years supply as well for myself besides that. Mm -hmm. So from that day on, I was annoyed with the fellow, yeah. annoyed with everybody else because they were throwing it up at me. Yeah. And I just left it. But at least I got something out of it. Yeah, I, I bet there's a lot of people out there with stories, probably not as big as that, but it's amazing how people that you trust let you down in stupid well, ways. That's I know. what happens. So get everything down in writing and make yeah. sure you've got everything prepared in a correct yeah. manner. Or maybe use reputable companies. And try not to borrow money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've never been one for borrowing money, but you've no. certainly lent a lot of money. That's another story, but yes. we won't go into no. it. <laughs> and and people that have been your best friends come and taking stock and you've tried to help them out. That's I mean, right. We, we've both been told that, you know, friendship is friendship, but is it really a friendship when they keep borrowing money off you or asking for stock? Well, unfortunately, I learned my, my, yeah. my mistake, but instead of learning once like most people do, or twice at the most, I would do the same thing over and over again. Well, there's always a new so angle. I was an idiot. No, there's always a new well, angle. Well, I was taught, uh, you know, like the desiderata says, let not the sins of the few blind you to the goodness of the many. And Good I point. sort of followed that. And, yeah. Uh, it yeah. didn't work out. Yeah. No, there's, there's a lot of this goes along all the time. I remember I was in your warehouse many years ago and somebody came up with this deal for you. And they wanted you to supply a load of stock for them to go and do some rodeo or some market or some shop or something. And he said, well, how much stock do you need? And I think they said 20,000 pounds or something. And you said, how much will you make on that stock? So they said, well, probably I'll end up making about 1,500 pounds. And you said, you know what? I'll give you the 1,500 pounds and I'll save myself a lot of money. <laughs> that's, that's sort of true. It yeah. has uh, true overtones. Yes. Okay. It wasn't <laughs> precise. It, it was the message that, that we gave. Yes. But, you know, you, 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 you've often come up with sort of, innovations i mean I, I remember coming down to your place i mean, came down a few times on a sunday morning when you were open and you had queues coming out the door and people were coming in what were they coming in is because you served half of half of cheating with bagels and cups of tea that's true <laughs> so you used to put big thick dollops of butter on the bagels and that's everyone right. was coming in from that's miles right. around for your well, bagels. the customers when you other did. people weren't getting you them did. you've always being able to pull people with niceties. I mean, and, and you're quite in, innovative with technology. I mean, you, you, you spoke to me a few months ago and, and you said, you know, I'm, and we were talking about online marketing and, and you said um, you've been Googling to get customers. And I said, yes. what do you mean Googling? Because I, I didn't know you even knew what that was. And you said, yeah, yeah, I've been going on Google Maps. So I said, well, how, how do you use Google Maps to get customers? So how do you use Google Maps to get customers, Dan? Well, I... I go to different towns, like uh, I I went to um, a Cumbrian little town. And this is all online, isn't it? This is all online. Yeah. And I, I use Google satellites where you can go down the streets and the thing. Mm. And I sort of drove down the streets and I saw either side shops. I took the phone number, rang them and pulled them into the warehouse. You see, take a lesson from this. And I got quite a few. Big yeah. ones. I know you have. You've always done this. But you see, a lot of people out there today, they think that the internet is the answer to bring business in. And it is. But they, they expect, a lot of people expect to send emails out and get returns. And they don't. Or they go and spend fortunes in SEO. On advertising. Adverts and ad, but yeah. you, don't, you do it the proper way. You, I don't you, know if it's the proper way. It's that, just you got, a you way. You got business out of it. And it didn't cost you anything. Oh, yeah. And That's you enjoy right. doing it. So this, yeah, but yeah. you have to have a website as well. Yeah, of course you do. You need to have... tell them what you've got or show them or yeah. get them to go there. Yeah. No, no, this is brilliant. You've no the idea. The advantage of it is when I was young, I had to go there. Hmm. Now I don't. Yeah. Yeah. But I hope everyone can see the message from this, that it's great spending fortunes on adverbs and um, pay-per-click and emails and all these clever people that say they'll get business to you but you know there's nothing wrong with the old-fashioned face-to-face telephone contact and nowadays you can actually you can actually do video calls to, to people actually show them samples hey look at this and, and that's exactly what you do so innovatively i mean how many times have we been driving down the motorway 
Yeah. Okay. And how I've many times people up on the there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you have. You know, I remember once we were going somewhere. Mr. Patel, yeah. Yeah. And and you saw this van. And he still saw, comes to me. Did, right. So, still so comes but, to me. but you saw he we saw this van and it had we didn't know what was in the back of the van, but in through the window at the back of the van we could see the see there was something in it. So my dad <laughs> Got, drove in front of him, flagged him down, pulled him up on our shoulder, and went and sold him some bags and brought him into the warehouse. And he's still a customer. To, how long ago was that? It must be thirty years ago. Easily, yeah, easily. A long time ago. So, so yeah. So, so you do. You have. You quirky, but you you connect with people. I mean, like I I, I remember again one of your one of your. I'm retiring. I'm out of it. And and but then you set up, and you set up in a little back street where you yeah. couldn't see. And, and what you did was you had this billboard and you, you scribbled on it in felt tip or, or black ink and you went, Benny's here. And with an arrow, that's all, Benny's here. And and yet you got people coming, didn't you? <laughs> it worked. It, it worked. And this is it. A lot of what you do, you know how to touch people. I shouldn't say that. You'll get locked up. No, uh -huh. you know how to co connect with people. And and I, I, that's something that has, has come down to me. And it's something I want people listening to this that to, to, to take care of, to, 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 to listen to and take on board. You can't be anonymous. You can't be in the background. You've got to go out, even if it's online, and you've got to make contact with people. Um, now, now just, just, just going on to other things you do, because we've talked about be careful of bad debts, get people things in writing, take care of your paperwork, you, you know, um, the, the, the tax people, it's not like the old days when you could go in each year and, and do a deal with them. <laughs> Because you did plenty of those. Tell that's us about your, tell us about your tax experience. Oh no, no, that's no, true. that's a good one. It's a good story. Well, they they sent me every year. They were sending me bills for like a thousand pound, and I went in and I, I, I got had the same fella, funnily enough, for for years. The same inspector. The same inspector, and uh, I gave him my usual sub story and one thing or another, and he says, "All right, we'll do it while you're here." So we did it while they did it while. We were there, and I ended up instead of paying a thousand pounds, I paid two pound ten shillings. <laughs> I said, "Can I pay it now?" Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I went uh, a few years later uh, for a few years, and he says to me one day, "Mr. Englander, we can't keep on like this. You have to get an accountant." No, 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 you have to. So I found uh, an accountant called Michael, who you may remember. No, but he was my accountant. But and uh, the first year, I had to pay twelve hundred pounds. I said, "What's going on here?" <laughs> Anyway, needless to say, yeah. I had to go in, and that was the last year I could go and argue. Yeah. Not argue, no. Negotiate. Negotiate, yeah. Yeah. You and can't that do that to, anymore. That led to other things. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't do that No, anymore. you can't do no. it anymore. The... No. It's black and white. That's the, how it's Definitely. Done. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is... Yeah. But we're all a product of our times. There was a time when we could negotiate with the... With the with the tax man or the, the VAT. I mean, it wasn't VAT in those days, it was purchase, purchase tax. tax. So it was a time that you could negotiate with people. It was a time that paperwork could be fuzzy, but not anymore, not anymore. It, it's all online, it's all digitized, and HMRC can see everything that you find. Yes, you've got to so, account for everything. Yeah, so now we're all good boys. We do it right, good girls as well. Maybe we, that's why I want to retire. No. Maybe, maybe you know. You know, I'll tell you what. If if I if I was in my twenties again, I wouldn't be going into accountancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so it's very stressful, and and I feel for people. But you know, like I say, we're living in those times now, and um, you know that's just it. But you know, you're more than just just you've got more interests outside of business. I mean, I, I can say the other day I I was actually on a podcast. Um, similar to this, but with another firm. And the guy asked me, um, "What? Why do I keep going? Where do I get the energy from to keep going?" And I said, "Well, I don't have a very good sex life, so this is how it comes out." But I'm hoping you don't give me that answer when, or maybe I'm no. hoping you do. When, when I, when I say to you, um, "What? What keeps you going?" Just life itself. It's yeah. uh, there's a lot of fun in life still. Yeah, not the same as what it is, and I hear up from so many people who are worse off than me, which yeah. cheers me up no end. Yeah, so yeah, I just too. keep going. It's it, like reading the obituaries, isn't it? It's like saying, "Yes, I'm here. You're gone. not. Yeah, yeah I've been." Well, my friends have more or less all died. Have they? Yeah, well, that's what happens, and yeah. uh, it's something to do. I enjoy coming into the place and nattering yeah. people. Yeah, uh, as you say, we always have a new little idea, yeah. and it's nice to. Uh, 
meet new people. And yeah. Staff are good. That you know they are good with me. Yeah, yes, they are. And I've got a good wife. And yeah, now there's a youngster in the family who's yeah, who's taking shape nicely. And mm. uh, what more can I ask for? Yeah. No, it's all good. This is Mark. I've got a, a little brother who's 19 who's studying at Cambridge for now. So we're all very proud of him. So, but the other thing, when, when you're dealing with customers, I mean, you do spend an awful lot of your business time with clients and customers playing chess and drafts. Well, they like it. Yeah. So, so I believe I believe there's a drafts move named after you. Oh, well, that's in the club, yes. Yeah. So there's actually an official world book where they've recognised the move that you you come out with and yeah. they call it what do they call it benny's move benny's <laughs> move and it's named after you but you've also you, you know you've, you've spent a lot of time um being very successful in chess as well not really i'm oh. I'm, I'm club standard i've never mm. lit really rated I'm club standard yeah which is, uh, it's pretty good i've reached the standard which is uh, a good reasonable standard at things i've done yeah. reasonable yeah never never excelled at anything well you have because you've reached world champion class of drafts well, it's not mm -hmm. well, you know what <laughs> it's like comparing me to spassky a world chess champion yeah. i played for manchester he played for the world so am i in world class no well, it's, manchester's, like a world, no. manchester's a world class city yeah. but so 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 we talked about chess and we talked about the bagels and and i actually your designs for bags you always designed the bags around the materials available, didn't you? And the labor uh, available. Yeah, but I was a very good copier. I was a lousy yeah. designer, but yeah. a very good copier. Well, you always said you had the best designers in the in the, in world, the world working for That's you. Right. Yeah. So so you'd you'd go in, copy their designs, but make them cheaper. So you wouldn't be spending three thousand pounds on a bag, you'd be spending no. two pounds fifty. Not even that. Not you know, I went that. into uh into a, a big store, I won't mention the name. Yeah. And they had a wallet there that I rather fancied making. Mm. So I asked the uh, the, um, the assistant to show me it. So she took it out and I looked at it. I said, it's very nice. I'll have one of these. How much is it? Thinking five, six quid. She said, it's 215 pounds. I said, what? Why? She says, well, look, it's Hermes. It's got Hermes written on. I said, oh, forget it. But uh, what I did, I took the measurements in my head, which I can do. And I went away and I got better quality leather than that was made of. And I produced them and I've sold loads at two quid a piece. <laughs> I and love it. Just good. Still I, I, they're, they're probably better, are they? I love it. The leather love is it. better. Yeah. Than they use. No, no, no. I love it. So you must have some pet hates, things you don't like about the business or business in general. No, I'm afraid not. Not really. No, you like everything. Yeah. You didn't like it when we were kids coming in, dropping bags on the floor. Oh, because look how hard I worked. I know. No, it's it. funny because you would, if you were one of these dads that if we came to you and said, Dad, we can have some, can I have some money? You'd never say what for. You just gave it to us. Yeah. You didn't value that. Or you'd look behind the chat couch. Oh, that was a good you know. one. Do you know what we used to do? You, you, I don't know if this is suitable, this program, but when we were kids, me and my sister, this was before mobile phones. One of us would run to the local telephone box, phone you, you know, you'd get up, answer the phone, and while you're out, the other one would go around the back of the chair to see if what change had fallen out your pocket. So, you know, that's how we got spending money. But but just going back to, to money from you, you, you would give us money, but, oh, if we dropped a purse or a bag on the floor and not pick it up, you'd, oh, you'd, that, that annoyed you. But I we learned come, that from Mr. Dyson. Ah, right. This was somebody that we worked with many years ago that guided us a bit in, in the ways of business. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so um, we've we've gone through a few things now. So, but if we could summarise in in one big thing, what makes you want to come to work? What's your favourite thing that you do apart from just chit chatting with customers? What do you get the most satisfaction of? The day goes by. Yeah, nothing. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I'm not out. I've not got much ambition left in my age. But yeah. I just keep going. The bag itself. And I, 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 no, I've got no answers to that. So, so the handbag itself, or the purse, or the production, is the goal in itself. 
a, a new one I still enjoy. I still yeah. enjoy a little project. Yeah. So so I hope our audience has got a lot from you. And <laughs> and can can I impose on you that if we do have anybody that likes your down to earth style and, and you've got ideas and, and really want to get involved with you with some of the machinery and some of the processes that you've you've designed to, to run with it, you'd be happy telling people how it's done so they can work with you or even on their own to, to expand wish. it. Yeah. So if you want any help at all, I'll I'll put my dad's email up, yeah? On on the screen. And you can either contact him direct or if you do sell bags and you want bags or you want to have any bags made specially for you, then feel free to contact him direct. And if, if you'd rather come through me or you want to say, who is this guy, you know, contact me. But in the meantime, I want to thank you very much for coming in, Dad. It's, it's, you know, You're I know welcome. it took I know it took us about two hours to set up the cameras, but there we go. You know. Oh, technology for me. Yeah, it is. So thank you very much for joining me today. Well, and uh, thank you to the audience for listening to me again. Hopefully it's been uh, interesting for you. And I'll uh, see you on the next episode. Take care. Oh, no, bye.